Oh, man, I just listened to our speech, man, from our University of Michigan head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Oh, man, it was just so powerful. Oh, man, you Colorado Buffalo YouTube, YouTube co-followers, y'all will never hear a more powerful speech than what Jim Harbaugh just delivered. Oh, man, Coach Prime can never put words together like that. Oh, without putting God and Jesus and Buddha and Hamlin and everybody into it. Ha, sha, 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 sha. Oh, he delivered a most powerful speech. And you know about the speech that he delivered, what was so powerful? It was about the team and school pride. Oh, it was just so amazing. It goes back to heart, back to the old days when school had school pride. When there was a foundation, there was a school foundation. See, what you don't realize is that this was a not something that was done overnight. It wasn't something that was just built through a transfer portal. It wasn't something that was built over cameras and YouTube and telling other play in a time and period where you can tell other people I'm not hard to find. Harbaugh couldn't, couldn't when he came in, he could tell the people I'm not hard to find. He'll get brought up on violations, which he did, and he wasn't doing that stuff. He wasn't brought up on a time when he was making Skittle commercials, laying on the bed with a pimp with a pimp robe on and Skittles falling out the sky on him. No, Harbaugh wasn't. He wasn't in that time. Harbaugh came in a time where he couldn't say anything. Everybody hated him. If, if he take his kids over to Europe, all his kids over to Europe to see the Eiffel Tower leaning. I don't know the Eiffel Tower on cocaine or something. I don't know, but Eiffel Tower was they was they how they built the Eiffel Tower? They must have been how they built that thing. I don't know how just that. Still though, no. Harbaugh took his kids over to Europe. Everybody complained about that. He didn't take his kids to Roscoe Chicken and Waffles. He didn't take his kids to the hood to see Bambi. He didn't take his hood, his kids to see uh, uh, whatever, whatever boom doc y'all go see. He he took his kids to Europe. He took the little black boys out of out of the. Well, I'm sorry, Harbaugh coaches all kids. He just don't coach black men. He coaches all colors of men because everybody is a team it takes it, it when you when you open a box of of uh of, of rice crispy cheerios whatever it is not cheerios that but you know fruit loot no not fruit we don't want to do over no fruit loot definitely don't over no fruit loot if you eat fruit loot just say you know i eat loops you know just put it like that but it takes a mixture of everybody harbaugh took his team over there and they saw you and everybody raved they wanted to penalize harbaugh why he take his team he why did he everything harbaugh did this what you're seeing in that speech is accumulation of years of grind where coach had to rebuild a whole program. See, this is like people like me, not no fair weather fans like these new Colorado Buffalo players uh, fans just coming on the bandwagon, you know, follow a guy because he got gold teeth and he's a coach follower, you know, then he's a coach leader, you know, that's what Colorado is. Michigan fans, we can talk like this because we stayed with our team through the hard times. We wanted our coach struggle at the at, at the news so many times. They keep reminding me down here. All the bragging I do down here, they keep reminding me. Wait, wait, you know what wanted Coach Harbaugh hung up? Well, that's past history. We don't talk about history right now. We just talk about the current event now, okay? We suffered through all that, okay? We suffered through it, and this is the prize. This is why Michigan people, Michigan men, Michigan women can stand up and we can be proud of this because we suffered through the, the beatdown from Ohio State. Just one year, well, actually three years, two years, actually. Ohio State is feeling what we felt for the last seven years when they was beating us. And they want to kill their coach right now. They want to hang their coach. He got more 11 games and they want to hang. That's how the pride runs deep between us. We don't care about no college football championship. We don't care about that crap. We care about beating that team below us. That's our footstool. Ohio State is a footstool of Michigan. They sit below us. We put our foot on them, and they've been putting their foot on us, and we finally got past Ohio State. That's where the pride of Michigan comes in at, beating Ohio State. And we did it two years in a row. 
Oh, ha sha 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 sha. Ha sha 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 sha. Oh, I need TDJs to put his head. No, no, I know. I'm talking to no. I don't need two DJs put his hands on my head. No, no. That's almost like getting the Bill Cosby put on your head. Ah, no, I don't need time to hurry. Oh, almost. Oh, I think I'm going a little too far. Uh, okay, I don't need to put the hands on my head. Okay, uh, don't do that. Okay, all right. Yeah, but I'm listening to that powerful piece, piece by Harbaugh. And I'm listening to it, and I can sense the school pride. The school pride in that. The school pride in the team. I can sense the suffering. I can sense all the abuse that our school took all these years. See, when I say we Michigan men, we, like when y'all say, we coach pride, y'all knew. Y'all knew. Y'all bandwagoners. Y'all knew. Y'all ain't suffering with no Colorado. The true Colorado players, the true Colorado football fans, they have no more legacy at that school because everything is brand new. The coach don't even preach culture. The coach don't even, because he don't know the culture of Colorado. He ain't no Colorado man. He don't he ain't Eric B. Enemy. He ain't Cordell Stewart. That's why they don't sing the school fight song. Do you know what Michigan was singing after they beat Washington? They wasn't singing, hey, Bucky, put your song on, Bucky. I I got, they told me to find my way. I mean, oh, oh. They ain't putting no jiggle boo wait and let the music on. They was in the locker room singing, hell to the victor. That's school pride. That comes first. Not no jigaboo music in there. That's what y'all don't have. They wouldn't listen to Yellow Beezy. I'm Yellow Beezy. I'm a single mother. They wouldn't sing. They wouldn't listen to no Disney nursery rhymes. Michigan was singing Hell to the Victor. They were singing the school fight song that they have sung for years. Because they are the winningest program in college history. And we suffered. We suffered at the hands of that school beneath our footstool, beating the tail of us. We had a we had a coach come from Florida, Urban Myers, who was a well, <laughs> Urban was a pimp. <laughs> came there and hugged our tails out. And then, then he left before Harbaugh can get can, 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 can put him in our sights. He got the heck out quick. Probably messing around with them little guns down there. Oh, Irvin, a bad boy. <laughs> Irvin, smile for the camera with your head on the booty. <laughs> Irvin, my boy. I, was, I like Irvin, my boy. Irvin, my pimp boy. <laughs> but still, though, he got out quick. We suffered. That's why we can be so proud. We can be so bodacious. They even took our coach out. They took our coach out. And we still rolled. That's why Harbaugh say that 144 is the greatest. They won, they beat Ohio State. They ran through the gauntlet. But most of all, they did without the head coach. They did it under so much pressure and adversity. No other program would stick together like that just for the money. Them kids are together because of school pride. It's about Michigan, hell to the victor. It's about the legacy. It's about the program. It's about Charles Woodson. It's about all the players, Tom Brady, who are Michigan men. It was about them. Colorado, what y'all got? It's about the must be the money. It's about the gold chain. It's about Coach Pride. It's about my boy Shadua. We know what my boy Shadua need. Oh, we know what my boy need. My boy need this. My boy, hey, uh, Coach Pride, what do the team need? The team? What the team? Team? What you mean team? I know we know what our boy need. We don't even know what no team need. <laughs> I heard that I was like, but that fool crazy. He talking about what? <laughs> we know what you're doing, me. I was like, right now I'm gone. I was like, whoa, man. <laughs> Dude off his rocker. <laughs> we know what you're doing, me. <laughs> you, y'all have, Colorado has no school pride. Like that big fella of <clears throat> what is zero to 60 matches. Like he said, they don't even, they don't even, they don't even, they only say the fool school, the school fight zone. Where's the legacy there? They can come in there <coughs> and tell them kids how to be buffs. We can tell you when the kids come in what it's like. We can tell them, we can show them what it's like to be Michigan men. To be a Michigan man. See, I'm a Michigan man because I pay taxes. <laughs> I pay taxes, okay? I pay taxes in Michigan. For years and years, I paid taxes in Michigan. I got a high school education in Michigan. I did like my Detroit Lions on road day. I suffered with Michigan and Detroit Lions. I, I have the badge. 
like that, that, that big fella Matt and Cordell Stewart, they have the badge of suffering with Colorado. Matter of fact, I've been when Colorado beat us. Beat Michigan one year. Show did. I remember, I remember that with Colorado. Matter of fact, I think Colorado. No, we went to Colorado and Colorado beat us. I remember that. And I want to say it was a black coach that was coaching Colorado at the time. But they beat Michigan. But still, though, where in Colorado locker room did they have anybody that has the passion of can deliver a speech from this, this, I'm talking about this, in, on, on their staff? It ain't, where's the legacy Colorado Buffaloes is on that staff? That big fella Matt say that, oh, he thought Coach Pratt was going to hire him. Coach Pratt would not hire a black boy from Minnesota to coach his offensive line. Did, did, did he ever, did he ever, I wouldn't even get that, I don't watch the channel too, but did I wouldn't even get that big fella a, 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 a job. Go to probably Ben Franklin, that fella. Hey, give him nothing. Probably ain't taking on his player because he buy players left and right out, out the portal. There's no school pride. That fella was saying they don't even sing the school fight song. You know why they say school fight song? Because they're up there singing them jiggaboo songs. We're going to lift weights. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, let's. Oh, oh, Bucky, that's tight. Oh, Bucky. Oh, that's a tight song. They're in the locker room. Jimmy Horn and them buck dancing. Oh, oh, that's tight, Bucky. They, they know they can't say nothing else on camera. I bet, I bet Jimmy Horn and them said they was like, God dang, this is some. <laughs> I ain't gonna mess with Bucky. Bucky good rapper. I'm just saying though, instead of having that old butt bowl muck music going on in the weight room, when Coach Mo is the only coach on that team, the only coach on that team that know what he's doing, you can see the results because them players was ready to play. They was physically conditioned to play. Coach Mo, you want a job, you come to Michigan. You get in that transfer portal, Coach Mo, and you come to Michigan. You the only one on there can have you have the players ready. Now, I know you ain't like all that jiggle music in your locker room, but you just couldn't say anything because you know Coach Prime, you know, he'd put you to transfer one like he did Tracy. I know you ain't like, I know you wanted more concentration and focus, but see, that's why that little junior bucket with the iPhone trying to get you on camera so you can participate in that boondock and stuff. You know, when he bring, come on that brand new person, hey, Coach Mo, look at my new purse I got. Oh, it's a Fendi. Oh, that, Coach Mo, said, that's a purse. Oh, that, that, ain't, that ain't no purse. It ain't no purse. It ain't no purse, Coach Brown. This race is a Fendi. It's a camera bag. Coach Mo be looking like, man, get the hell out of here, man. That's a purse, man. <laughs> Coach Mo be looking like, man, get the hell out out of here, man. Come on, that pearl. Why, why you come showing me this crap, man? <laughs> Coach Mo can't say nothing, no. Coach Mo be like, man, get out of here with that foot, that foot in my office. So as so, soon as so somebody sent him a little purse, he run to Coach Mo office. Hey, Coach Mo, Coach Mo, look at, the, look at this. Look at the purse. They just sent me this purse. Coach Mo be looking like, man, that's a, that's a purse, man. No, it's a, no, it's a camera bag. It's a, it's a Gucci. It's a, it's a, it's a brick bag. It's a brick bag. You know, I like brick bag, you know. I'm like a little gal, you know. I like a little fast, solid fashion, you know. I was born in a solid fashion. You know, my family style of fashion, you know, we just went through a hard time, but we needed some money. So I had to put the iPhone on my daddy again, put it back in my prime life. But Coach Mo would be looking like, man, I need, I need to talk to Coach my squad, man. I don't need to be on here, man, listening to this boom stop. Come on, come on got in front of them office with a doggone purse. <laughs> what am I on the purse? <laughs> Coach Mo, Coach Mo, I wish you just stay out of my damn weight room when I'm trying to train my kids. But with that damn camera, man, distracting my kids with that damn camera. <laughs> hey, look, look. Hey, guys, look. Yeah, look, wait, let me show you. Oh, yeah, pump, 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 pump. <laughs> <laughs> Cause what was that? I would hear a lot of Richie in my in my weight room. I don't want to hear no. I'm gonna me a minute. I found my way. <laughs> oh man, no fight song. They need to hear what is the Colorado Buffaloes fight song. That's what I want to know. What is it? What is it? Is, 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 I mean, is it? You know, it's like the Gilligan Island song. Is it, uh, what is it? I don't, I'm not trying to make fun of it. I just never heard it because it ain't no school pride. All the school pride in Colorado has been stripped away and replaced by the new Jigaboo Moves music. Come on, buddy. Hey, I got a, I got a Mercedes Benz. I'm right out of big box. Look at my jewelry. Look at my jewelry. I got this B. And you know what is amazing? The some of the sometimes when I listen to little Bucky with iPhone music, he be doing a whole lot of cussing, talking about B and all that stuff. I said, "Ain't his daddy a pastor?" 
I mean, and then, you know, how many women he be pimping? He said he a pimp, you know, and B, and he be doing a lot of cussing. I say, hey, don't that boy go to church on Sundays? Don't you go to Bible Sunday? Or do he like them Catholics? You know, them Catholics do. Them Catholics just go to church. You know, I remember I had the old boy when we was in, uh, on the military base. Every time he used to go, every time we used to go out to the, to, 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 to the Airmen's Club, right? Before we go to the Airmen's Club, he always used to go to want to go to the Catholic church that was on base, right? And I take him there, and he run in there, he be in there for like 10 minutes, right? Then he come right, I say, okay, man, let's go. I be like, man, what the hell you doing there? He say, man, I say, I'll just go in there and say Hail Mary's or something. I say, so you go in there before we hit the Airman's Club, you go in there and you pray for you for what you about to do. He say, yeah, yeah, he say, that way I'll forgive you. My conscience is clear. I say, shit, man, that's religion. I should be. I say, black folks usually do it opposite. Black folks usually commit to sin and then say, oh, we all fall short of the God. <laughs> we all fall short of the glory of God. Oh, every man sin. Oh, ain't no man perfect. <laughs> That's what black people do. Ain't no man perfect. We all fall short after we do it, right? Well, white folks smart. Catholics are smart. They know that they gonna do some crazy stuff, right? So they go in there and they pray before getting their little mirrors out, right? The past, the uh, the priest be on the other side, the little wood divider, <laughs> drinking a little hooch, <laughs> listen to this stupid story, thinking to himself, I gotta get back to these little boys. <laughs> I wish this fool would get out of here with this story. Okay, all right, I bless you. Say a hundred hell Marys. <laughs> get your head, get your tail out of here. I gotta get back to, to my little boys back, <laughs> back there. He jumping. The car, yeah, let's roll, man. I like, God dang, boy, I should be a Catholic, man. Y'all got, they got all the money too. Catholic people, the Catholic, they got, they live in big houses. They got their house. <laughs> people, Baptist and black, they got, they live in the hood. <laughs> oh, but ain't nobody perfect though. Oh, we all fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> Watch every, every Negro get in trouble. <laughs> the first thing they do go to church. Oh, we all fall short. <laughs> ain't nobody perfect. Oh, boy. Ain't hey, nobody use that like black people, boy. I, every time I hear it, I be like, boy, he's another boondocker. <laughs> he's another boondocker. Fooling these dumb Negroes out here. And yeah, yeah, they right. That's right. Everybody falls short of Nobody said they were perfect. Ah, don't give me that crap. You walk perfect. You say you were perfect. Every day you did illustrate like you were perfect, but behind closed doors, you just a man, right? Then when you get caught, everybody falls short. Oh, boy. That's a... You know, that's like these days in 2024, having a black card, you having a race card in your back pocket, right? Oh, that's what black people got. Black people card, when they get caught is, you know, these high body black folks, you know, when they get caught, oh, I'm just a man. Oh, I didn't promise that. I fall short. <laughs> like me, I get drunk. I pull a race card. Oh, I'm black. Oh, it was a black man? <laughs> I pull that race card out. Oh, man. Oh, I'm back to Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Oh, I watched that speech, Harbaugh. Oh, that was a great speech. Oh, that's a great man. He is a great man. Oh, <laughs> like Uncle Ruggles. Oh, he is a great man. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Uncle Ruggles for, for, for Harbaugh. He's a great man. But I wanted that to, <laughs> I wanted that butt go, boy. I ain't lying to you. Let Harbaugh lose that sheet next year. I turn on him like I don't know what. <laughs> I'm too faithful like a boy. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm too faithful, boy. You break my heart. I'm gonna I'm hug you out, boy. I did. I was watching that speech. Now, the only thing I ain't like about Harbaugh's speech, I don't know what's going on with that fella, Dylan, uh, not Dylan Edwards, but uh, uh, Edwards, our running back Edwards, the one who was ran up two touchdowns. I think he should have got some of words. Now, hopefully, I think he ain't, I think he coming back. I hope he come back next year. I hope he come back next year. And if he come back next year, he going to roll. You know, he going to be the, he had to give Blake Corm a little shot because Blake Corm is leaving. But that boy, John, I think it's, I don't care think Ed was, yeah. But he's, y'all know what I'm talking about, the bad boy from Michigan. He's a bad boy. I guess he was doing dealing with some things, you know. And uh, But I, hopefully he got his stuff together the next year. He come back and because he's a Michigan man. You know, if it wasn't for him, you know, them two touchdowns, he ran one for him, you know, we probably would have been in the hole, you know. But still, though, it's a team with Michigan. It's a team. It's not an individual thing, you know. Uh, 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 Harbaugh understands because he been with these players for all these years. You see, he just they get players in this year and then next year get new players in, you know. I was looking at that thing about the, the Florida State coach, you know, they told the Florida State coach, they just gave him like $10 million a year, a good coach, and everybody wanted Deion Sanders to go to Florida State, you know, and this cat, this cat would have been in the bowl game if his quarterbacks wouldn't have got hurt. 
You know, I mean, the cat did a good job. He turned that team around. And you know what? He didn't kick all his players out of Florida State. Isn't that amazing? This cat went to Florida State and didn't kick his players out and almost took him to a bowl game if it for injuries. And y'all talking about uh, Coach Prime had a successful season at 4-8 in the last place, right? Like he the only one <laughs> that ever took a losing clean the previous year and won three more games to stay in last place. <laughs> oh, y'all funny, boy. Oh, y'all funny. Oh, you got it all. <laughs> Look over here and then y'all look at that Look, we get Oh, y'all see that? Coach Pride just lied. And he just got a new linebacker from Mexico. Mexico. Who the hell is Mexico State? <laughs> laughing. We got a new linebacker from Mexico State. He's a dog. He's a dog. Mexico State. <laughs> Where the hell do they play at? What they play? In the, they play in the cartel bowl? <laughs> Ain't never heard of them, fella. They hear, like the fella came from LSU or Texas or Alabama or Michigan. Oh, man, y'all funny, these players, y'all. Oh, George Seaton. George Seaton, man. I'm like, who the hell is George Seaton? He was a freshman coming. What the hell had George Seaton done? <laughs> he was a five, five-star. I like George Seaton, that did shit. <laughs> George Seaton, that did nothing. And he on all, look, he on all the shows. Look, oh, and Rich Eisner. I'm Rich Eisner. I'm telling you, Rich Eisner. Rich Eisner. I'm thinking about pulling your Michigan man car from you for putting that for putting that little fella Jordan seating on your show, and he ain't did nothing, man. Rich Eisner, you must. How much did Colorado pay you to put that little fella on your show, and that little fella ain't did nothing? You a Michigan man, huh? Rich Eisner, you on my radar. You on, you lucky. You lucky. You know you kind of turned me around. You know when you start. When you start advocating for Michigan, not doing anything wrong, okay? I start, okay, I say, okay, I'm going to let him slide on that. But let me tell you, next year, you may not have no Colorado Buffalo players who ain't did shit on your flow, your platform, okay? I ain't like that. I'm like, who the hell is George Seaton? I ain't never heard of the little fella. Have he, he, play, have he played against Michigan yet? Has he played against Alabama yet? Has he played against Texas yet? Has he played Texas A&M yet? <laughs> they ain't got no team. I mean, what the little fella did? Has he played Florida yet? Nah, he ain't played the games yet. I'm like, what the hell the little fella? Has, has he played UCF? US, USF? US, USF? You, what the hell did that tell him? I'm like, what the hell this player did? And the, and the whole YouTube. <laughs> Even Skip Bayless. Oh, George Seaton. <coughs> and it didn't dawn on me at the time. I'm thinking, who the hell is this kid? And I'm thinking the kid good because, you know, everybody talking about it. My Michigan man, Rick Eisner. The kid ain't did shit. He ain't play nobody. <laughs> when he came to IMG Academy, he ain't played nobody. He ain't got punched in his mouth yet by them defensive boys yet. I don't care how big you is. Y'all keep thinking size is everything. Size is not everything. Trust me, size is not everything. <laughs> Technique is everything. <laughs> you get a fella. I remember. <laughs> oh man, I was in Louisiana. I had this little guy named Rodney. <laughs> Rodney was see, Rodney was like a little. And like at that time, you know, we we little fellas. But Rodney was like a dwarf, and he was little to me. But Rodney had an attitude. This sucker had an attitude like a honey badger. I, I was like, and so it was me, Rodney, and it was another kid. Uh, I, I think his name was, I, can't, I think his name was Ernie. Me, Rodney, Ernie. We used to run together, okay? We used to play, you know, softball and, and everything together. We used to run, we used to walk the tra run, run the train tracks together. But Ernie and Rodney was closer because they lived, they lived kind of close to each other. And Rodney had a, a pretty, a pretty bad, pretty, uh, you know what? Rodney had a childhood. He had a, he had a challenging childhood, but Rodney had an attitude and Red little fella was a leader. Now, you know, you always have the short one is always a leader and Ernie was the bigger guy, right? Ernie had good hands. He had some good hands on him too, but he was like <laughs> little Rodney Pitt, little pit bull. Okay. Put it like this here. 
Rodney was Dion Sanders <laughs> and Ward Sapp was, was Ernie, okay? <laughs> All right? Just my opinion, okay? He was Ward Sapp, okay? He, he would do anything right to tell him to do, right? He would b- punch your lights off if, if you say something bad about Rodney, right? Okay? He was the Ward Sapp, okay? So, <laughs> so uh, I remember... I came from I I I had left because my dad used to take us down further down in the country on on uh, Saturdays, and I came back that Monday, and I saw Rodney and Ernie. We were by uh we were by the bridge up on Applewhite, had a big field right there, and uh, he was asking me where I've been. <laughs> like, like you know like I'm his old lady or something, you know I was in the country, you know he was like. <laughs> And, so, and something happened. I can't remember the full detail, but something happened. But we end up in the field. Now, I thought I was pretty good with my hands. I ain't like to fight because I was scared to fight, okay? I only fought because I was scared, okay? Because now my cousin, D.D. Nell, <laughs> there were some fighters, okay? But I ain't like hanging with them because whatever with my cousin, D.B., he was so big. He, my cousin, B.P. was like T.R. Sanders, okay? That's how my cousin, B.P. He would talk trash. He was bigoty, right? And he gonna fight. Okay, he gonna fight. And and our family back there in Louisiana, the big family is that if one fight, all gotta fight. So I stopped hanging with my cousin BB because he talk all that bull crap, right? And get and I gotta fight and I don't wanna fight. Okay. I ain't lying to you. I I get that by where I hug by myself because I don't wanna nobody else get me to no dog on fight. But I remember me and Rodney end up end up in the field and I'm sure I got him because I'm bigger than Rodney, okay? At the time, you know, I'm a little, we little, but I'm a little bitch. I'm going to slap him and kick him in the ditch, <laughs> right? I'm thinking, right, that little sucker hit me with a left and a right so quick. <laughs> I think my head spin, I think my head spin around. I think my body was in place with my head spin around. I was like, shoot. <laughs> then let like, Joe got some hands. And he did some other little moves around me. Man, I was like, shh. Man, I took that little butt, that little two minute butt whooping, man. That little sucker can go. That taught me right there that <laughs> just because somebody is small, smaller than you, don't mean <laughs> that you can whoop them or that you better than them. I seen many times where a little short fella or smaller fella, the big fella, the big fella got hugged out. <laughs> now the big fella, if he get, if he hits you one time and you can't take that punch, the little fella is out. The little fella, little smaller people are always naturally, some of them, fearful of big people because of their size. But if you get a little fella that ain't afraid of size, that's why Suge Knight got along. Suge Knight, everybody was scared of Suge Knight until that little barbershop fella knocked, knocked his tail out. And the little barbershop fella knocked Suge Knight's tail out when nobody's scared of it because people was intimidated by what the appearance, appearance, that's what they was intimidated by. Not what the guy, the guy can't do nothing. Like I tell people, if you don't practice something every day, you ain't got no skill for it. You ain't gonna be good at it when you run into somebody who can. If you don't hit the bag every day, the punching bag every day, okay? If you don't trade on whatever you do every day, you're not gonna be good at it. No matter how big you are, people are gonna be intimidated. People are gonna challenge you because of your size. But if you get somebody who practice something every day, you know, they practice their hands, they practice their, they are, they are, they practice. They, they, they practice. They mix. They mix martial arts. They practice their. Uh, uh, I love. Uh, I love. Uh, uh, I, mean, I think I was, I was just watching one the other night. Uh, uh, my Thai bow. Muay Thai. I love. I love Muay Thai. I would have had that little rapper guy. He was heavily in Muay, in Muay Thai. I love. I love Muay Thai. Okay. If, that's why I got. Well, I will tell you all that. But still, though, if you don't practice something every day, you're gonna be fearful. You're gonna be intimidated by something that's bigger than you. There's something that's different from you. But if you practice something every day, then you know what you're capable of because you this is a reflex now. And that's why when I look at I was a couple I watched a couple of football games. Matter of fact, I was watching uh when I was watching Michigan and Washington, Washington line was bigger than Michigan defense. Alabama offensive line is bigger than Michigan defense. But I tell people it's not so much about size, it's about the skill and the technique, what you practice, what you reflex on. And that's why Michigan got to, got, got to them quarterbacks who nobody got to all year because size don't matter. So when I looked at, <laughs> I went back and looked at Jordan Seaton, he ain't did anything. What is all the hype for? He ain't did it. He ain't played nobody. 
He ain't got punch in his mouth yet. He haven't seen what he haven't seen at, 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 at the power five of those couple. So why build up all this hype in this kid? They're like y'all built up the hype in Colorado last year when the kid ain't did none yet. Okay, yeah, he's a five star. I've seen many five stars uh, uh, coming to the league. It ain't pan out. It ain't live up to expectations. So what's all the hype? The hype. Not saying that the kid ain't a good, good, can't play. I'm not saying the kid can't play. I'm not saying the kid is not a good player. I'm saying he ain't did nothing. What has he done? And all this hype, just like Coach Pryor, he ain't did nothing at the Power Five. All that hype. That's what I say. Colorado need to need to chill with all the hype. Do what you're gonna do. Build your program. Say what you're gonna pro. But all the hype, come down. You don't need the hype. You only need hype when you don't have substance. That's when you need hype. If you got substance, you don't need. Ohio State built the program. If a kid want to come to Ohio State, you you know our pedigree. Michigan, you know our pedigree. Alabama, you know our pedigree. LSU, you know our pedigree. FS, F, F, Florida State is building, but still, they still have a foundation. foundation. They still have a pedigree. Even Miami, they got a pedigree. You know, just got <laughs> just got to have a criminal record to go to Barry Hurricane. You know, you don't just get in with a D minus and a criminal record. We'll let you in. <laughs> you can go to juvenile hall or you can go to full fully Miami Hurricane. I'm just kidding, Hurricane. I'm just kidding. Okay, I don't want y'all messing with me because I know y'all for real down there. <laughs> I don't want to end up on no boat to Hades. Okay, all right. But still, though, no. these teams have a foundation that they build that they're maintaining, whether you like it or not. Colorado doesn't have that, okay? So what are you selling? You have to sell the flash. You have to sell the hype to try to get players to try to get players to come to your school because there's no substance as far as no foundation, no count, no no coaches, no principles, no system that is built in that school that a player can look at and say, "I can go learn from there." They can't. All that has been stripped away. All the legacy Buffalo kids has been kicked out. Everything Buffalo has been kicked out. It's like Coach Pryor came out and say, they was 11 last year. I don't want none of this best around me. They all lose. Get them all out here. I don't even want to talk to them. But you had other programs like Northwestern Ward 11 team. They didn't kick all their players out. The only thing they did was win. For the state to kick all their players out, the only thing they did was win. They didn't. They knew how to evaluate players and how to retaliate. They didn't, they didn't want to, as the old saying, say scorch earth and we're going to start new. No, they didn't do that. You can't do that in sports because you got a lot of that history. A lot of the players in Colorado who sometimes players, and all the time, a player, just because a player is, like I told you about the Bad New Bears or a fighter, sometimes a fighter could be a bad fight. He could be a losing fighter. But then he get another coach or another trainer in, right, who, who, who can evaluate him, his technique, and that boxer can turn into a good boxer. I had a partner named Marlon, Marlon, Marlon Jackson. That was his name. Marlon Jackson up 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 up, up in up, up in Michigan, you know Marlon was a hell of a basketball player. You know I was telling you about me how me and Marlon got cut because of Tally Nixon was a fan of him coming his other boys and Tally Nixon had a friend named Andy Barrios. Yeah, it was Andy Barrios, Tally Nixon, Andy Barrios, and JoJo. Andy Barrios and and Tally they had two fine sisters. That's why everybody all the older kids everybody loved them, but still don't. Okay, I'm just regressing from a prior story down that I that I had told. Uh, but Marlon, Marlon on the street, Marlon had hands, okay? Because Marlon was groomed by older guys. And the guys that he was groomed by was old country boys that was up in Michigan. Then when they side of town, and they had hands, okay? Which they, had, they had their own little basketball park where, where we went to play them at. And when Marlon got into boxing, I was kind of surprised. When he got into boxing, even though he had hands on the street, when he got into the ring, he got beat a couple times, right? And, and everybody was thinking that, you know, Marlon, hey, man, he ain't as good as everybody in pro. But then Marlon got another trainer. He got another trainer, and Marlon started winning. He fought he fought at Arvin Hills. Uh, uh, they had a boxing match in Arvin Hills, Michigan. Uh, Marlon fought, and he fought a couple of fights, too. He did, he did pretty good in, in uh, boxing after he got that new trainer. So what I'm saying is that just because you have a, a person or a team that's losing probably this year, it may not be all the team. It may not be the talent on the team. It may be the coaches. Just like Colorado had all these talented this year, but the coaches was the problem, not the players. They could have won eight games easy. It wasn't the players. It was the coaches that didn't know how to make adjustments. 
So you so you can't scorch earth and start new because it was a foundation that Colorado with players who had pride. Don't you think them, them players didn't want to be one in 11? They had pride. You had players that that, that followed, went to, went to, uh, they had legacy players, subs playing at that school that's just gone, just wiped away. Every foundation that school, that's why they don't know the school fight song. Who's going to teach it to them? And then if you paying players to come in every year, why should a player that you plan every year come in and learn a school fight song? When a player come into Michigan, oh, he going to learn that fight song because you got other Michigan men still on that team. The senior over him that's gonna make him learn that fight song. And then he gonna he gonna teach that fight song when somebody else come in. That's keeping the train rolling. Again, that's why your Michigans and your Ohio State, and I hate saying Ohio State, but football season over. I don't, I don't even dislike Ohio State doing football season. Right now they okay. They still our footstool though. But still, they got a good program. You can't deny their program. I'm talking trash now because I deserve it because they kicked our tails all these years. I deserve to talk trash now. But I, over 40, 50 some years, Michigan, baby, I can talk this. Can you we Cole Pride co-fathers? Can y'all say this? Can y'all say that y'all stuck with Colorado Buffalo all these years? Even the Colorado Buffalo, the buffs, the the real buff, like I keep saying that, that big fella Matt McCluss, can he look at that team and see anything in that team that resembles who he played for? Can he look at that team and see anything that exudes the pride of being a buff? Can Gordel Stewart, can Eric be enemy? Can they look at anything on that team that has the history and the spirit of the Buffaloes? No, in my opinion. It starts with the school fight song. That, just like when you just like when, when you Negroes go to church, they want to fill y'all with that music. And how when they when they when they, when they, want, when they want y'all to put some on that collection plate, the volume of the music goes up. Huh? When the, when the preacher wanna deliver a certain part of the message, the volume of the music goes down. You don't, you don't understand that when you're in church. Oh, it's time. It's time to spread the around. Don't do, 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 do music God. Draw it up. They try to pump y'all up. Get y'all all hyped up. Oh, that Jesus is coming. Don't get bring that money down here. Throw it at the altar. Jesus is coming. Yeah, yeah. Jigga boo, jigga boo, jigga boo. Bring the music to the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, y'all, and y'all get all hyped up. Start dancing. Get up and start lining up out of church. Lining up out the road. Out the pews. They go put y'all money in collection plate. And y'all just dancing while you're doing it. Emotional stimulation. All this is psycho- psychology would be ran on you. So this is why a school fight song, because a school fight song get every T, every player on the same page. Because this is one. You know, when you're in the locker room and you're hearing jigaboo music all the time, you know, the white players can't relate to that. You know, uh, the little Mexican player, you know, Mata can't miss. <laughs> that little fella miss. I don't know how many damn times. And people still say, and people still believe Mata can't miss. Nah, see, that y'all need to stop all that crap. <laughs> he, he, what is it? It doesn't, a fight song unites all the different races of players in the locker room that makes a team. Not just one type of music or one type of song. That divides. Because everybody don't want to hear that. Everybody ain't into that. But if you make everybody hear the same thing, that's pride. And this is what being held to the victor. Held to the victor is pride. It's one. It's Michigan one. It's Michigan men. And Michigan men just don't mean biological men. It means women too. Michigan men is Michigan men and Michigan women. That's what being a Michigan uh, man is. Well, I'll be Michigan man football. Okay. All right. Okay. I got to mess that up. Maybe I need hard to explain that. Okay. All right. But I'm just saying, though, this was an excellent speech for him. Everybody should go listen to this speech. Coach Pryor, you need to sit down and listen to this speech and learn how 
to make everything inclusive instead of about you and your boys and your and, 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 and your family. Learn how to stop saying the word, you know, use words like Harbaugh use. You know, you may have to use, may need a teleprompter, you know, <laughs> you may need a teleprompter. But learn, but you would never give a speech like this at Colorado because y'all would never, never see a national championship under Coach Pride. Now, y'all notice I ain't been saying Deion Bishop. I'm trying to be more respectful now. I'm going to call the gentleman by his name, Coach Pride. Y'all would never see a national championship under Coach Pride because the guy cannot coach. Not to say he can't learn. He can't coach. Okay? And he's not going to be there seven years, eight years, like Harbaugh was at Michigan. He's not going to suffer through the season. He's not going to be, he's not going to be, uh, well, he, it's a little easy for him because he, he, he can buy players and he can do Skittle commercials and pimp house coats and Skittles fall out the sky. Hey, get these nuts here. You know, and, and you know, he can, you know, his son can say, hey, he, they, they can they can advertise, they can try to post players from other teams and openly and publicly now, which, you know, Harbaugh couldn't do that, you know. Harbaugh say one thing and they had they have him under investigation or allegation, you know, like Michael Irvin, you know. <laughs> oh, Mike, I love Michael Irvin, though. What a freaking idiot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, this is a well-deserved speech because this speech is, is a suffering speech. Harbaugh suffered, but he stayed with his team. He didn't abandon Michigan. He didn't abandon Michigan. And if he do leave, then Harbaugh, you, you restored Michigan. You restored Michigan. And now Sharon Moore and Jesse Manor, they, they got this now. Colorado, y'all would never be able to say this under Coach Pride. Now, I'm getting ready later on to watch my you, my Detroit Lions, baby. Oh, I used to live right across the street from Seven, though. Oh, I've been a Lions fan, man. I've been suffering. I still love my Detroit Lions. Oh, do I love my Detroit Lions. And today, oh, we going to roll the day over, over them doggone bad. Matt Stafford, you always good for two, three interceptions. <laughs> Matt Stafford was always good for two, three interceptions in the Pontiac Silver Dome. That joker, but except to the other team. Hopefully, that you will continue, <coughs> you will continue the trend of throwing interceptions, but not in the Silver Dome, but in Ford Field, okay? Tell you that trend, because you're going to throw them to us now. You owe us, Matt Stafford. You owe us this game. So do the, be the regular Matt Stafford. Now, I know we got to watch out for you in the fourth quarter, because that's when you usually play good. When, when you're down in the fourth quarter, Matt Stafford used to play good. But if we can get ahead now, we can get ahead early, we can weather the storm. Our mission today is to take care of the Rams and Matt Stafford and roll, because it's Detroit, baby. And Hutchinson... Hudson's going to have a great day because he all motivated for Michigan winning. Hudson's going to have a great day. So, Matt Safford, meet Hudson. He's going to be your best friend all day. Go Detroit Lions. We did, Harbaugh didn't, didn't deliver University of Michigan over the finish line. Now, now uh, our coach, our coach at Detroit Lions, he finna get us over the first game of the playoff hump. And then we can hit it for you Cowboys. We're going to pay you Cowboys back. For that little uh, bull junk y'all pull. Because uh, the players already said it. We going to see them again. Hudson said we going to see them again. That's the mission. The mission. Get, 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 uh, get rid of Stafford and get to them Cowboys. That's our mission. So y'all watch the Detroit Lions now. Oh, boy, I love them Detroit Lions, boy. Oh, 